The head of the Xianzhou Luofu's Divination Commission and a confident, no-nonsense sage. Using her third eye and the matrix of prescience, Fu Xuan calculates the Xianzhou's navigational route and predicts the fortune of future events. She firmly believes that everything she does is the best solution for the situation. Fu Xuan is a five-star quantum character that is the ultimate jack of all trades. She follows the preservation path. A preservation character would typically provide shields for allies and offer extra utilities to boost the whole team's survivability. Fu Xuan, however, defies the rules. Unlike our current preservation characters who scale with defense stats, Fu Xuan scales towards HP stats. Instead of granting shields, she would absorb some of the damage taken by her allies. Even though she doesn't follow the abundance path, Fu Xuan can heal allies in two different ways. She can also enable all allies to resist crowd control debuffs. Even though she doesn't follow the harmony path, Fu Xuan can buff up the team. More so if you grabbed her signature LC and her first idol on. Last but not the least, if built in a unique way, she could act like a semi-erudition character. As a quantum element character, this means that if Fu Xuan is able to deplete an enemy's toughness bar, she will deal minor amounts of extra damage, delay the enemy's action by an extra 20%, and inflict a debuff that would detonate once the enemy has recovered. Quantum Element's break effect is arguably the best if compared to the other elements. It combines strong crowd control and high burst damage. The debuff it applies has a damage stacking mechanic where any attack would increase its stack by one and would cap at five stacks. The detonation damage is based on the amount of stacks. The higher the stacks are, the more damage it would deal upon detonation. Adding the fact that Fu Xuan could apply action delay through Quantum's break effect, it means that Fu Xuan can also control enemies to an extent. It is no exaggeration that our Master Diviner is simply able to do everything. As much as I want to summarize a character's features by focusing on their core kit, Fu Xuan wouldn't allow that. So let me guide you through her whole kit. Fu Xuan mitigates damage in two ways. One is by transferring a set percentage of damage taken by her teammates to herself. This is thanks to the Matrix of Prescience, which is activated by her skill and lasts for three turns. The other damage mitigation source is her talent. As long as Fu Xuan is alive, Misfortune Avoidance is permanently applied to her allies, which reduces incoming damage by a set percentage. Fu Xuan heals her teammates in two ways. The basic method is by using her ultimate. This triggers the effect of her A4 trace, which heals all allies by an amount equal to 5% of Fu Xuan's max HP, plus a fixed amount of 133. The other method is through the second effect of Fu Xuan's talent. When Fu Xuan's max HP falls below 50%, she will automatically heal herself based on the amount of HP she is currently missing. Fu Xuan can buff her teammates. Fu Xuan's buffs are pretty straightforward. As long as her skill effect is active, it would increase allies' max HP based on her own max HP and provide a decent amount of critical rate boost. Fu Xuan's supporting capabilities can be further improved if you grab her signature LC, which provides an extra damage percent boost, and her first Eidolon, which makes her knowledge effect additionally increase critical damage by 30%. Fu Xuan can help teammates resist crowd control debuffs. This powerful feature comes from Fu Xuan's A6 trace, when Fu Xuan's Matrix of Prescience is active, it allows all allies to resist an incoming crowd control debuff once. This effect can only be triggered once per Matrix activation. Interestingly, even though this effect wears off as soon as it is able to resist a crowd control debuff, it can actually resist AoE crowd control, meaning it could technically proc multiple times at once. Fu Xuan can deal decent AoE damage. Fu Xuan gets a total of 35.7% default critical rate stats with the help of her minor traces, and if we factor in that, her skill is at level 10. This means that if you work on her critical damage stats, she would be able to deal decent AoE damage through her ultimate and maybe even through basic attacks. However, before you proceed with a sub-damage dealer build, please make sure to watch the video section where I explain all its positives and negatives.
Fu Xuan has the capability to sustain the whole team by herself. As long as she possesses a trigger count for her talent, she will keep flipping her HP back to almost full whenever she drops below 50% HP. Each time she uses her ultimate, she will heal her teammates and gain a trigger count for her talent. In short, as long as Fu Xuan is able to use her ultimate frequently, it is almost impossible for her and her team to die. Unless Fu Xuan got one-shotted from absorbing too much damage. So if you're planning to use Fu Xuan as a solo sustain for the team, I highly suggest using a quick ultimate rotation. To achieve a guaranteed ultimate rotation with short cycles, Fu Xuan would need to use her signature LC. She already shut her eyes. By using an energy rope and using her skill twice, you can see that it guarantees 138 total energy, which is enough to reset Fu Xuan's ultimate rotation. A great alternative would be using Moment of Victory LC or Landau's Choice LC to increase Fu Xuan's aggro. As you can see here, with an energy rope and two skill casts, Fu Xuan will have a total of 125 energy. This means that as long as Fu Xuan gets hit at least one time directly, she will recover enough energy to cast her ultimate and reset her rotation. So now that we improved Fu Xuan's ultimate rotation, it makes you wonder if it's worth making Fu Xuan SP negative. For all the extra benefits aside from her sustain, I would say that it is totally worth it. In the first place, a solo sustain Fu Xuan frees up the healer slot in the team, meaning you could bring something else that could be SP positive to cancel out Fu Xuan's SP demands. With such an easy fix, you will enjoy the following. Greatly improved team survivability, Consistent crowd control resistance. Critical stat and max HP boosts. AoE weakness breaks at a better frequency. More AoE damage if Fu Xuan is built as a sub-damage dealer. If anything, Fu Xuan is exactly designed to spam her skill due to the effect of her second trace. This trace provides an extra 20 energy whenever Fu Xuan uses her skill while the Matrix of Prescience buff is active. One could definitely argue that you won't always need an SP negative Fu Xuan. Yes. You won't always need such a hardcore build for Fu Xuan, but it's better to be prepared for actual hard content. Later in the video, I will showcase how Fu Xuan being SP negative helps her and her team a lot in surviving one of the hardest contents in the game. Now that we know how important it is for Fu Xuan to be spamming her ultimate, it makes you wonder whether it is viable to build Fu Xuan as a sub-damage dealer. Short answer, somewhat viable. Long answer, we first need to take a look at her damage potential. This is Fu Xuan's damage compared to a sub-dealer Yukong. Even with a two-turn ultimate rotation on Fu Xuan, she can only deal one-third of Yukong's damage output. But of course, you're not here to listen to me say that Fu Xuan's damage is very poor. You're here to know how to make it work because you want to have fun. There is definitely potential when a character can use their ultimate every two turns. If Fu Xuan could somehow get an extra turn on each of her turns, that means she will technically have a one-turn ultimate rotation. Luckily, a character that could provide an extra turn exists. Bronya. With Bronya alone, Fu Xuan gets an average of 426% performance boost. This gives her enough DPT to act like a proper erudition character. For example, her single target damage becomes quite as good as Himeko. But remember, Fu Xuan's ultimate is a true AoE. This means that if we multiply her damage by two if she's against two enemies, her two target damage becomes almost as good as Blade's two target damage. Just remember that these comparisons are Fu Xuan plus Bronya versus Himeko and Blade's individual performance. Before moving on, I would like to emphasize that you shouldn't bother with a sub-damage dealer Fu Xuan if you don't have her signature LC, first Eidolon and Bronya. As already mentioned, her individual damage output is just too sad to be even considered. This specific section is only made for those who are interested in min-maxing their sub-dealer Fu Xuan. It is safe to skip to the next section if you only plan to use Fu Xuan as a support. The 426% performance boost of Bronya doesn't come for free. Pairing Fu Xuan and Bronya means that each time they rotate, it will cost you a total of 3 SP. That is very hard to sustain, even if there's 2 SP positive characters in the team. So let's fix the SP problem first. The easiest way is to add Pella into the team. Of course, it shouldn't be some randomly built Pella. It needs to be a high-speed Pella that uses Tutorial LC and Eagle Set. 
This Pella build allows her to be the best SP generator currently in the game, and will still provide support through her 100% uptime defense shred. This defense shred also synergizes well with Fushuan, since it is applied against all enemies. Next is being constantly aware of Fushuan's energy meter. Getting hit directly can provide extra 10 energy or more. Even more energy is generated if Fushuan is equipped with an energy rope and her signature LC. By utilizing this extra energy source, there are times where you can replace one of her skills cast into a basic attack and still maintain a two-turn ultimate rotation. That means this rotation with Bronya would only cost you a total of one SP instead of three. When using this pattern, you should use Fu Xuan's skill on her turn, then use her basic attack, followed by her ultimate on Bronya's push. This would result in a better damage burst, since both the basic attack and ultimate are getting boosted by Bronya. Last but not the least, you simply change Fu Xuan's actions with Bronya into two consecutive basic attacks, resulting in an SP positive rotation. Fu Xuan doesn't lose that much damage output with this pattern, since her basic attack at level 6 means she is still doing 50% HP modifier as damage each. This totals to 100% HP modifier, which is the same as her level 10 ultimate. Though obviously, only one basic attack gets boosted by Bronya in this case. Despite our Master Diviner's greatness, she has one big weakness, getting one-shotted. Take a look at this. That is difficulty 6 Kokolia almost one-shotting Fu Xuan. Because we don't have control over Fu Xuan's talent that flips her HP, some AoE nukes could potentially kill her. Worst case scenario is having slightly above 50% max HP when the boss uses its AoE nuke. Without enough HP to buffer the damage, Fu Xuan could easily die. Some might argue that this could be just bad luck. If Fu Xuan had plenty of health before the nuke, she would have no issues tanking it through. I do agree that it could be just bad luck, but there are certainly stronger enemies than Kokolia that deal much more damage. Take Yanking at MOC 10, for example. So, despite all the hype behind Fu Xuan's solo sustaining capabilities, it might be best to adjust your strategy to prevent any one-shots from happening. This could be through changing gears, or by adding another support that would help Fu Xuan be able to tank through. Fu Xuan's Eidolons are not that complex except for her E6. Personally, I think that stopping at her first Eidolon is already such a great value. Getting the second Eidolon is a skill issue. The fourth Eidolon allows her to drop energy rope for an HP rope. The last Eidolon basically converts Fu Xuan into a true erudition character. It is extremely hard to quantify how much damage increase it provides, since it would always depend on how much incoming damage there is, but assuming that you are utilizing it at its fullest, it would easily provide a 300% performance increase or higher to her ultimate. Fu Xuan can actually join any kind of team setups as a full support. You don't have to worry about whether she should be in a mono quantum team or not. Put her on any team and she will do wonders. But if she really has to pair with a specific character, that would be Silver Wolf. Fu Xuan and Silver Wolf can easily complement any other characters in a duo element setup. Some quick examples on who they could pair with is Blade and Bronya, Himeko and Asta, or Jing Yuan and Ting Yun. Fu Xuan is only picky if you build her as a sub damage dealer. As mentioned earlier, Fu Xuan's damage output is extremely low by default, and her only saving grace is to reduce her two turn ultimate rotation technically into one turn. This is only possible with Bronya. To solve the SP issues of the Fu Xuan and Bronya pairing, you would need Pella. For the last slot, I highly suggest Silver Wolf, because Fu Xuan's scaling towards HP stats means she doesn't synergize well with the other Harmony characters. Therefore, the only way to push Fu Xuan's damage further is to keep reducing the enemy's defense to zero. You might wonder if it's even worth making a team centered around a sub-dealer Fu Xuan. The thing is that, Fu Xuan acting like a semi-harmony character means that Pella and Silver Wolf could easily go for a sub-dealer build as well. This overall improves the team's performance when it comes to damage output. And you don't have to worry about the two being squishy, since Fu Xuan solves that with her preservation character features.
And now that we know more about Fu Xuan and how to build her, I personally think that this needs a showcase. Here is an E1 Fu Xuan solo sustaining the whole team in one of the hardest contents in the game, Memory of Xianzhou 6. As a bonus, this is also a sub-damage dealer build. Please note that both Pella and Silverwolf are E0 with subpar builds, meaning they could significantly do better with a stronger build. And there we have it. Memory of Xianzhou 6 cleared in two cycles with a team that had no core damage dealer. Overall, Fu Xuan is easily the best support on her release. Usually a jack of all trades leaves a bad impression, but Fu Xuan would easily pull out a no you card and prove herself otherwise. Should you try to pull or build Fu Xuan if you get the chance? Yes. Pulling for Fushuan reminds me of pulling for Silverwolf. She has so much value as a support that it is easy to regret skipping her later on. Fushuan is a massive QOL once she joins your team. Her role compression is easy to underestimate when you personally haven't used her. Everything will become apparent once you are able to test her and have a good grasp at what she really brings into the table. And that's it for now. Like if you enjoyed the video and subscribe for more content.